I don't have any clue at this point what Major League Baseball is doing. This is incompetence on an epic scale that Major League Baseball players and owners cannot get everything worked out and be ready to go right now. They now have managed to push the earliest start to their season all the way back to July 10th on the newest proposal, which effectively, by the way, the players appear to have announced is dead on arrival. The initial idea, if you remember, was that Major League Baseball was going to be back around July 4th, and now they have pushed it all the way back to July 10th at the earliest as they continue to fumble with an opportunity to establish a return date. And at this point, whether it's millionaires, players, or billionaire owners, I don't think there's very much sympathy out there for them at all. And this is not supported by any of the statistical data that's out there surrounding the coronavirus. Let me just kind of walk you through. So I told you last week that at some point the media was going to pivot back from the protests being the overall number one story in America to the coronavirus being the number one story in America again. The most impactful, immediate change that we have seen from the protest is they knocked the coronavirus ticker, you know, off the corner of the right screen that has been up, whether you watch CNN or Fox News or MSNBC on the overall infection rate. It knocked that coronavirus box off television for the time while the protest and the ensuing riots and everything else surrounding that story, uh, it knocked the coronavirus off television. Well, now that we have circled back around and it seems like the protests are calming down and it isn't still the number one story in America, it seems like now all of a sudden the media is going to pivot back to the coronavirus. Oh my God, it's so dangerous. The reality is there are lots of stories out there that continue to let us know that I believe we wildly overreacted to the coronavirus. And that means that we should be, in my opinion, playing NBA and Major League Baseball and MLS and NHL games right now. They are doing it in Europe, in France, in Italy, and in England with Serie A in Italy, with EPL, the English Premier League in England, and with La Liga in Spain. Germany has been playing in uh, with the Bundesliga for weeks. And so leave Germany aside there, all of those European countries had a much higher death rate per capita, nearly twice what ours is in the United States, and they're already back to normalcy effectively in Europe from the coronavirus. Uh, now, the data also is reflecting according to the WHO, and look, the World Health Organization has dropped the ball on a lot of their coverage of this virus, but as more countries have been sharing their data, there is more reliability in the data. The WHO came out yesterday and said they think asymptomatic transmission, that is people who are asymptomatic for the coronavirus, they spread the coronavirus very rarely. There's been a lot of focus on people who might be sick that don't know they're sick. The WHO says the data reflects that the people who are asymptomatic don't spread the virus very much. And again, the virus doesn't care how it spreads, but California has gone from arresting people who are threatening to arrest people who go to the beach to allowing hundreds of thousands of people to show up protesting all over their state. And so this thing is over in terms of the data. If you look at where we're going, I said yesterday, I try to share the actual data with you. Uh, The actual data from the coronavirus over the last couple of days, yesterday, 640 people nationwide died of the coronavirus just 4.23% of all people who were tested were positive. 
640 people dying nationwide of the coronavirus. Remember, it doesn't mean they died of the coronavirus necessarily. It means they died with the coronavirus. That means there were nearly 7,000 people yesterday in the United States who died of something other than the coronavirus, which is pretty wild to think about. We have every day in this country around 7,500 people who die, and most of the time it gets absolutely no attention whatsoever. So that was yesterday, Monday's numbers. Sunday's numbers were even lower. Uh, Sunday, only 453 people died of the coronavirus. So we have reached the point now where over 7,000 people in this country are dying of something every day other than the coronavirus, and we aren't changing our behavior very substantially at all. So this is an utter and unmitigated failure to me on behalf of Major League Baseball, not just because baseball can't get something resolved right now, but because they should have been playing for all of this month and all of next month. There's no reason why Major League Baseball shouldn't have already been back. And frankly, there's no reason why the NBA should is not restarting until July 31st. They should have been back before then. Now, you can at least come up with a uh, argument that one reason the NBA is starting back later is maybe they're thinking they're going to end up back in their home gyms as they move through the playoffs, which I think would make complete sense. I'm not sure that that necessarily the NBA wants to have crowds, but if you're having crowds for college football and NFL games, I think there's a possibility that the NBA goes ahead and pivots away from the location in Orlando after, you know, let's say by mid-September, they could theoretically go back to playing their games in arenas in those cities if the college football and NFL setup is going to allow you to play games uh, in the stadiums, which I think is likely. Now, things are a little bit different, obviously, for the NBA as part of an indoor arena as opposed to Major League Baseball and the NFL and college football, which get to play in outdoor venues. But all of this, when you look through uh, the storylines, it makes no sense with the overall data. And I've been saying this for over a month now, but it remains true. No one out there is going to have sympathy for millionaires and billionaires who can't figure things out. There are over 40 million people who have lost their jobs. There's over 100 million people who have taken pay cuts. The fact that Major League Baseball can't figure out how to get this done is an incredible indictment of the league. Owners, players, agents, executives, everybody affiliated with baseball should be ashamed of how they've managed to handle things so far. So we will talk, by the way, with John Morosi in uh, the second uh, hour of this show. Petros Papadakis, by the way, will join us in the third. Uh, But John Morosi is our Major League Baseball insider, and he's been relatively optimistic about the return of Major League Baseball. I'm curious whether that optimism still is there because early on there was talk, hey, Major League Baseball is going to need to get things worked out by around this point. This is kind of getting close to the drop-dead return date if they want to have a decent length of the season. And, I mean, we're in a crazy spot now where Texas is allowing half-full stadiums. I mean, if you are a fan of the Astros or the Rangers, in theory, you could be going to games right now with the stadium half full. We're not far away from Florida doing that either. And even in California, I believe I saw this, movie theaters are now opening up. Uh, If I'm not mistaken, maybe outside of LA and San Francisco, outside of major cities, movie theaters are opening up. If you can go sit in an enclosed area and watch a movie, there's no reason on the planet why you shouldn't be able to go watch a sporting event in person All of the arguments against America reopening are basically broken at this point. There's no reason why the entire country shouldn't be back to normal. And by the way, this doesn't mean that some people are not going to get sick with the coronavirus. You can't stop a virus from spreading. 
the goal of shutting down and, uh, and, and going in and lockdown mode initially was to avoid our hospitals being overloaded. No hospitals anywhere in the United States have been overloaded. Most of them haven't come anywhere close to being overloaded. In fact, there are a lot of you out there listening to me right now who are doctors or nurses and nearly lost your jobs because nobody was going to hospitals for months now because they stopped elective surgeries. We tried to avoid overloading hospitals, and we've nearly bankrupted many of them all over this country. Far from giving doctors and nurses far too much to do, we have actually ended up with far too little for them to do. So we got to think about all the consequences of our actions, and sports are a big part of those actions. And by the way, there's reason for lots of optimism, not just in the coronavirus itself uh, with the numbers that are declining, but also in the stock market. The stock market tends to look about six months ahead of where we are right now. Uh, If you pay attention to stock market indices, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, two of the three biggest indices that many people track alongside of the Dow, two of those three, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, are both up now for the year. That is, if you had bought stock in index funds in either the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, even with the awfulness in terms of the market in March and the massive declines, you would still have made money in 2020 so far. And even if you had bought stock at the beginning of January, you wouldn't have lost very much money in the Dow now with the massive run-up that we've seen in the stock market. So all of those factors are pretty massive, militating in favor of a return. I don't understand the thought process that is keeping us from being able to go back to pretty much complete normalcy now let me bring in the crew are you as disgusted Danny G as I am with Major League Baseball being unable to get this figured out I've been disgusted it's a little bit like Groundhog Day (laughs) in terms of every time a new proposal goes out for Major League Baseball and the owners and the players shoot it down you just wonder if anybody's looking for uh, a, a reasonable and rational way to bring back baseball is anybody looking in the best interest of the sport i mean recently john morosi told us he felt like eight out of ten was his odds of baseball returning that's right Right now it seems like five out of ten is our best hope it's 50 50 right now and it's leaning towards greed is going to get the best of them we've said it before based on this being about money and not the virus baseball's not only missed a golden opportunity to grab the attention of the whole country and put a smile on our faces they've completely dropped the ball on this all in the name of greed i mean at this point i would gladly take the pay that we've been giving to mlb owners and players and evenly distribute it as raises to like teachers nurses truck drivers good police officers and firefighters and uh and radio producers (laughs) (laughs) uh dub what what do you think about this whole insanity I mean, it hasn't been about health. So, I mean, that would be one thing. But it's been about the money for like two or three weeks now. And it doesn't even seem like they're close. The owners will, uh, you know, throw a proposal out there, which is like 50 games. And then the players will be like, oh, no, we need we need 112 games or whatever it is. Like they're not even in the same ballpark. And my confidence level. Yeah, I'm with Danny G. I'm curious to see what what uh, John Morosi's confidence level is today. I I know you're going to ask him that last week. It was an eight out of ten. I'd be surprised if it's above 5 out of 10, just like Danny G just stated. Eddie, do you feel like you're in Groundhog Day with every one of these baseball updates that you've been giving now for, frankly, either weeks or months about the negotiations here, and we haven't moved anywhere in any direction at all, and it just feels like we're on this constant treadmill of negotiation with no progress being made? Yeah, pretty much, and it's and it's always frustrating when you get the report that here's the offer, and as soon as it comes out, yes. they're already saying it, they're not even going to look at it. They're, not, they're just totally rejected right out of hand, so there's no talking at all going on, and 
I'm frustrated with it. And baseball isn't even in my top two as far as like you know favorite sports that I that I watch. I, I watch less and less baseball as the years go on. And again, I'm the older person here on the staff. I'm supposed to be like baseball should be in my wheelhouse, you would think, but judging by like the demographic, but it isn't. And this is only making it slide farther and farther down as far as my interest level goes. And if they do come back, and I've got football and hockey and every, anything else to watch, it's still. I mean. Maybe if there's a day game on and there's nothing else going up against it, I'll, I'll tune in. But, I mean, even basketball, I guess, is going to play all day games and hockey will as well. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's very frustrating. I'd love to hear. I've, now, I've heard, and, and maybe John Paul Morosi can expand on this, that the reason why people are optimistic that we're going to have baseball is because the owners are just going to say eventually, well, screw it. We're starting the season and you can either show up or not. And that's how the season is going to start. So, I, I mean, that sounds... I'd love to get John's uh, thoughts on that. What is ridiculous to me is you bitching baseball with an aging demographic. Baseball had an opportunity to have the entire American team sport calendar to itself. For all of June, which we've now passed through, for all of July, which they may screw up as well, they could have been the only American team sport that is underway. And instead of being able to do that and saying, hey, the minute that Arizona and Florida both opened up and would have allowed everybody to return to spring training, which was, by the way, May 15th, a long time ago now, way back in May, they could have been back working, being ready, willing, and able to be hit the ground running in June and be playing all through June and all through July and play a lot of games and make a ton of, I think honestly, a ton of fans who might otherwise not have been paying attention to baseball aware of the sport. Maybe you get in front of some eight and nine-year-olds who are sitting around with mom and dad or grandma and grandpa locked in their houses, not able to do very much, and they start to recognize why baseball can be a lot of fun. And that, that connection can last a really long time because most people, if you think back in your own lives, you probably branded yourself and became a sports fan really legitimately around seven, eight, or nine years old, right? Where you start to have a little bit of agency in your life and you can make choices about what you watch on television or what you pay attention to. My nine-year-old yesterday, we were out to dinner and he just turned to me and he said, Dad, are the Braves ever going to play again? (laughs) <laughs> it's like, why aren't they playing now? And I didn't have a good answer. I because because there's no argument that is legitimate in my mind for why Major League Baseball isn't playing right now. I mean, there are a lot of you know talk to a nine year old about all the financial challenges that are going on and uh, and, and all of those. But you know, when he's sitting around and we're out at a restaurant and you know he's got his Atlanta Braves gear that he loves to wear everywhere and. I think we talked about this on the program about the the challenge of him growing up a Braves fan. I was like, do I tell him about the awful postseason history of the Braves over the last, you know, 20 some odd years uh, or just let him experience it like he did? You know, he was so excited for the Braves to make the postseason and they choke in the first round against uh, the Cardinals. But there are probably a lot of dads and moms out there like me whose kids aren't getting to play Little League. Uh, at least initially. And now, by the way, they're starting to play Little League and you can go watch games at ballparks and everybody's basically back to normal in many ways. Baseball's a naturally social distancing sport. It's not like you have to tackle each other. It's not like you have to be on top of each other. By and large, baseball allows you to play so much easier without creating a lot of distance. And by the way, the newest data about asymptomatic spread means that unless you're sick, according to the most recent data, you aren't very likely to be spreading the virus. So there's not even that much danger of this spreading among teammates, right? I mean, if asymptomatic spread is not occurring very often, then the reaction to the coronavirus should be the same as the reaction to any other virus. When somebody gets sick, Don't spend time in the training room. Don't spend time around your teammates. Go get well. Like, this is just all nonsensical. What about you, Roberto? Are you fed up with the whole process? 
I, uh, yeah, it's, it's annoying, man. I, 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 out of everybody here, I'm the one that loves baseball the most, especially more even now that my daughter's five and I was experiencing T-ball with her and then obviously came to an end. Uh, it's a little annoying. I, I blame the owners. I, I blame the players. You know, the owners, uh, with the agreement they made with the players back in March, the, if the season is canceled, all they got to play the players is $170 million. And I also have a, a, a hard time believing that these owners who are, you know, billionaires and businessmen don't have some kind of insurance also to, to back them up back them up some way. And uh, the players have worked hard, you know, the, the players have also in fall here because they worked hard to, to get the union where it is today. And, you know, they're, they're not going to budge. But I remember feeling like this back in 2001 where it was close to the players striking again. I, I still feel that way. I'm still going to say they're, they're going to reach a deal, but it's, it's not looking good right now. Here's the deal. I don't think – and, and I think this is a uh, this is a big deal. I don't think fans are going to forgive. So this idea that players are going to be able to say, oh, it's the owner's fault, or owners are going to be able to say that it's the player's fault, I don't think most sports fans are going to care. I don't think they're going to dive into the, the nitty-gritty of the negotiations over whether baseball is coming back, and they're going to apportion blame one way or the other. I think most people are just going to have a generalized sense that baseball screwed up and they're going to apportion blame to the players and they're going to apportion blame to the owners. So this idea that baseball players and owners might have of, oh, well, it's not our fault. Fans aren't going to blame us. They're going to say a pox on both of your houses. We are done with both of you. This idea that you're going to be able to distinguish between the two and say, oh, no, no, this side was the one that behaved better I don't believe is going to be remotely true. This entire thing is ridiculous.